So if you're trying to give your digital footage that authentic film look, then the answer might be the missing piece. So first things first, uh, before we even start color grading anything, I just want to address what Dehancer actually is. And if you're watching this, you probably know that Dehancer is a film emulation plugin that allows you to get your digital footage to look like it was shot on film. What's really amazing with this plugin is that you get all the tools that you need to get your footage to look like it was shot on film. And as you may know, shooting on film is really expensive and more complicated than shooting on digital cameras. And that's why you're basically getting the best of both worlds. And I know that shooting on digital cameras will never look exactly like film, but you will get this look pretty similar look at least that makes your footage super interesting it gives it character it gives it a vintage vibe and makes it eye-catching and a lot of people will stop scrolling because it looks different it looks special so Dehancer is really really powerful you can convert your footage you can add film print you can add halation bloom effects you can add a lot of cool stuff to elevate your footage and make it look special but full disclaimer I basically got this software for free. So what happened was that I downloaded the free version. I tried different footage using the trial version of Dehancer and I instantly knew that it was something special. And it was super cool to see how fast you can get film-like looking images using the plugin. But what I did was I sent an email to the Dehancer team and asked them if they wanted to collaborate. I told them that most of my videos is about color grading, so it makes sense for me to make a tutorial about it, show you guys how I use it, and honestly, I love this plugin. The only thing I could say is that if you have too many effects stacked on top, it can lag a little bit depending on your computer, uh, but that has not been an issue for me, at least not a big issue. It's ways to work around that. But anyway, I'm not gonna ramble too much more. I'll, I'll show you guys how I get from A to B really fast. Let's get it. All right, so this is the clip that we're working with today. And first thing I do is to add the nodes. And I hit Command S to add three nodes. And um, I'll show you guys later. I'll make a video on how you can grade this in Final Cut as well. But like I said, keep watching because the plugin is the same. So I go into the effects. I go into Dehancer uh, like this. Drag this on top of the last node. And if you were to grade this in Adobe or Final Cut, you would want to have the plugin as the last thing. Um, imagine this is Final Cut, and then you have all your effects before uh, this plugin. All right, I'll make a video on it later. So, but keep watching because, like I said, this plugin, as you can see on the right side here, will be the same in all different software. So what you want to do is to uncheck all these effects because as you can see, I don't want the film grain, at least not yet. I don't want the film print yet and anything like the film profile, everything has to go. I can add that later because I don't want these effects to confuse me when I'm grading. Okay, so that's why I unchecked all the effects. First, we wanna convert this S-Log footage. So you go in here, uh, I did not shoot this in Rec. 709. I shot this in S-Log 3. So I go in here and I choose the camera that I use to record. Um, and then the Dehance rep will figure it out uh, from there. So I shot this in on Sony, uh, on my Sony A7 IV. And I shot this in S log 3 gamut 3 dot cine. Boom. So now it's basically converted. And it did a pretty good job. Uh, but I overexposed this when I shot it. And that's why I want to drag the exposure down quite a bit. Let's put it at one. Okay. I can always go back and dial this in. And now you can see that I need some saturation and some warmth, right? So I'll just drag this all the way up like this. 
okay? And then I go down here to uh, the film developer. I enable it and drag up the color boost quite a bit, like, like this. Yes, this is looking really good already. A little bit too saturated, but bear with me, guys. We will get there. Um, or I can just drag this down and then add more saturation later. It's up to you how you want to do it. Uh, ultimately, you have to figure things out and drag the sliders back and forth to, uh, you know, um, fit your image. Now we have basically corrected this image um, and converted it. So now it looks like it looked in real life. This is how I remember it in real life. Um, so now we have to add the film look. I mean, I could leave it at this, but there's more to it than just this. And um, what I want to do to create this vintage vibe is to add this film profile. It's the Kodak Vision 3 250D, all right? And before and after, you can see you lose a little bit of saturation, you lose a little bit of warmth, and it gives it another you know, character to the image, which I really like. But I feel like I need more saturation and more warmth in this image to make it pop and look better. To fix that, we can go in here and add more saturation. Let's drag it up to 70. I think that's a good number. You see, it's looking way better already. Okay, so next thing I want to do is to brighten this image up uh, by fixing the whites a little bit. So I can add, enable this, this one right here, enable it, and drag the whites. If I drag them all the way down, you can see, to 90, right? Oops, before and after using this. Not sure if you can see it, but before, after, before, after. As you can see, this is a little bit too magenta for my taste, right? So I gotta go up here to um, the input panel and drag maybe this to the warmer side all the way. As you can see, it's warmer. And then I can dra drag the tint a little bit down to the green side. And what that is doing, it's removing that magenta that I don't want. And this is just a stylistic preference of mine. See, before and after, before and after. I mean, you don't have to do it, but I think it looks good. Uh, next thing I wanna do is uh, to go down here. And if you see this color head, um, you can see that you can drag the yellows, the blues, and it's basically a way of doing split toning, if you know what that is. Let me enable it. Here you can drag this to the left, you can add coolness, but I wanted this image to look warm and moody. You can leave it at uh, 31, I think that's a good number. So as you can see, it's looking good, but what I wanna do next, go up here and drag the exposure further down, just a little bit more like this. Yes, I love this look. For me, this is perfect. I could have left it like this, but we're not done yet. Next thing I wanna do is to use the first note, this one right here, make sure to hit this, and go down here. This is where you get all the masks and stuff like that. You can add this shape mask. This is a beautiful mask, but you have to expand it a little bit like so, like this, and then you can go in here to the primaries and go to the offset, and as you can see, you can drag this up all the way to 30. Boom, right? And boom, this is how it looks. Really, really nice already. Uh, but what else we could do is to drag this gamma correction down. As you can see, it's, it's basically adding more contrast in a different way. Yeah, this is looking really, really nice. So what we can do next is to go into the second node here and add a little bit of more of this warmth in this image, like so. Yeah, this is looking amazing. Let's see before and after, before. So this is with the warmth from the temperature slider, and this is without. So it's a little bit cooler, a little bit warmer. I like the warm look, so I'm gonna leave it at that. So that is exactly what I did here. I added this temperature slider to the right, 120 on this note, like this. Um, so yeah, that's basically it when in terms of the color grade, but to make this stand out even more, you can add bloom, boom, before and after, but it's too much. I don't want it to be too crazy. 
I like it when it's subtle. You can see it, you can feel it, but it's not too obvious. Okay, so let's look at the before and after. This is without the plugin and this is with the plugin. So before, after, before, and after. All right, so this clip right here is shot the same day, same lighting conditions, almost just in the shadows. This was in the sun. So um, yeah, let me just copy all the settings from here. Command C and then go in here and Command V to paste all the attributes and all the nodes basically. So this is in, in the shadows of the city, right? So to compensate for that, we can go up to the exposure and drag this a little bit up. Like let's say 535, amazing. This is, a, this is beautiful, like I uh, love it. But as you can see, this is a little bit warmer than this. So then I can go to this node right here that we made where I added uh, warmth in the image in this image, I can do the same here. Just hit this node right here and drag more of the temperature slider up to let's say two, yeah, 260, like this. Amazing, I love it. This is looking great. This is what I did with basically all the clips, but of course, all the clips are not the same. This, for example, this clip, I shot this clip uh, earlier this day. So both of the first clips were shot during the sunset while this was shot broad daylight, but in the shadows. So um, if I paste the same attributes on this, it won't look as good, right? Uh, I mean, I could, I could work from here. I can maybe drag this down and stuff like that. Uh, but I'll rather show you guys in a next video how I graded these clips as well, because um, yeah, like you can see the structure of the nodes, three nodes, and as you can see, this is what the dehance wrap is doing, and as well here, this is what the dehance wrap is doing, and here as well, this is what the dehance wrap is doing. Again, this app is really, really powerful. Like I said, the grading is super easy. You don't need a bunch of nodes, and you don't need that much experience in terms of color grading. And I found that it's really hard to break an image using uh, the plugin as well. But um, this app is new to me. I got it a couple of weeks ago. So like I said, I'm making a review on it and I'm making more videos on how to color grade in uh, Final Cut and Adobe Premiere. That is it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you want to get that 10% discount, make sure to check the link in the description. And if you want to check out before you even buy, download the trial version to see if it's something for you. If you have any questions, you know what to do. Have a beautiful day. Peace.